The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Hi, I'm Sal. Today we'll be doing problem number four of Fall 2009 uh, Exam 1. Now, before you attempt the problem, there's certain uh, background information that you should know uh, before attempting it. One is knowledge in ionic bonding, because the problem deals with uh, ions. Two, how to draw an energy level diagram, very important. And three, what uh, Madeline's constant is. Now, before attempting the problem, it's you know good thing to read the whole problem in detail and make sure you don't skip anything out of it so that you get all the information that's given to you because that's very important. So the problem reads as follows. For a given cation C and anion A, show that the following four energy states on the same energy level diagram. One, ions at infinite separation. Two, an ion pair C and A. C stands for cation, A stands for anion. Three, an ion line CA, 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 to just a rep repetitive line of, of an ion and cations and for a crystalline solid of, of CA, so it's a three-dimensional crystal structure uh, with CNA. And it says also that assume that the comparison is based upon identical numbers of ions in all four states. The diagram need not to be drawn to scale. However, you must convey relative values of different energy states. So that what the pro that's what the problem reads. Now, if you recall from lecture, there's a, an a important equation that actually describes the energy between two uh, ions, so a cation and an anion. And this energy is directly proportional to the product of the two charges, and it's inversely proportional to the separation distance between them. Um, and it's multiplied by, by some constants. So what does this mean? Well, the fact that it's directly proportional to the product of your two charges means that your energy for any ion or any, you know, anything that ionically bonds it's going to be negative because your z minus will be negative and that's the whole value of the of your energy will be negative and that's what dictates stability how negative the the energy is so with that in mind we can go ahead and and, and start the problem so we have a cation a and an anion c now i like to draw diagrams or draw little pictures because that that helps me uh, when i'm solving the problem so i'm just going to draw pictures of a cation and an anion so i have a cation c and then I have an anion A. So C and A. And the value of R naught from our equation is pretty much the separation distance between the two. So if I can project this up, this is R naught. And if you look from the picture, R naught is just simply the radius of your cation plus the radius of your anion. Now, this is already describing the energy between just a cation and an anion with these magnitude of charges. So all that tells me is that this, are, this is already answering number two, pretty much from the problem that, that, that we're asked for, which is the ion pair. So the problem asks to draw an energy level diagram, and that's what I'm going to do over here. So I'm going to go ahead and start drawing the energy level diagram. Now, I'm going to go ahead and label my energy axis to be positive to be up. So, and I'm going to draw a baseline of, of zero here. So, I know that to be able to incorporate my ion pair, like I said, the energy is negative. So, if the energy goes up to here, and let's say the value of the energy here is zero, then that ion pair should lie somewhere below it. So, I'm going to go ahead and draw this line, and I'll label this as two. For our, for our energy level diagram. So this is the ion pair. Now, number one says ions at infinite separation. What is the energy of some two charged species that are separated by infinity? Well, if you look at your equation, your equation tells you that it's inversely proportional to the separation distance. So all that tells you is that if you divide by infinity, your energy should be essentially zero, which makes physical sense because 
those two charged species can't feel each other when they're separated. So this is actually already my number one, which is zero, separated away. So now we need to find what the energy is of an ion pair, which is the line of CA. So if we look at, you know, want to draw a little picture, it's pretty much going to be a repetition of that. And if I draw a line, it's not very straight. I'm going to draw a bunch of cations and anions. Essentially, I can just imagine that it extends to infinity on both ways. So if my energy between this ion and uh, this two ions right here is given by my equation, then I should be able to figure out what the energy is of the whole system because we're talking about electrostatic interaction, which is you can just add it linearly. So I can make one assumption. If I look at my cation and anion pair, I can go ahead and simplify my life by letting Z plus be 1. So I'll write that down. I'll let Z plus equal to plus 1, and, uh, which is the charge on our cation, so plus. And I'll let Z minus equal minus 1, which is the charge on the anion. So that's to help with the math. So if I come back over here, and if I look at my equation line, then I know that if I draw, let's say, a reference axis here, then the separation between the cation and anion is R0, and between the cation and the other cation is going to be 2R0, and it's going to extend for that. So if I, if I go ahead and I relabel my energy equation for a line, I'll go ahead and call it E line of function of R0, it's simply going to be the first one, which is going to be negative e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r naught multiplied 1 over minus 1 over n. So that's the energy between these two um, ions. So now, because the energy is electrostatic, this cation also feels the repulsion of this other cation. So Therefore, with that, you got to add what that interaction is. So the product of the two charges is plus 1, which gives it a plus um, on, in front of your equation. And I end up getting you know, e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. Now, here's something that you should pay particular attention. The separation between these two cations is not r naught. It's actually 2 r naught, because it's where, where exactly where it sits on the line. So my separation distance now becomes 2 r naught, and it's multiplied by the same 1 minus 1 over n factor. Then if you repeat it again, you know, now you're, you're analyzing the interaction energy between the cation and the other anion that's next on the line. So as you can see, you end up getting this nice uh, 4 pi epsilon naught, 3 r naught. 1 minus 1 over n. And essentially, it repeats uh, till it ends. Now, this is, I'm just analyzing on the right side. Now, because it extends, it's a, an infinite line, because it extends uh, from negative infinity to infinity, then you can also assume that there's an anion to the left. So all you really have to do is you take your overall energy for the right side, and you multiply it by 2, because it's additive. So this whole thing gets multiplied by 2. And that's essentially what the energy is of a line. Now, in order to be able to know where it lies on the energy level diagram, it's important to try to get it into the same basic form as the energy of an ion pair, just something simple, like over there. So just by looking at the equation, I know there's a lot of factors here that are common, like the the e squared, oh, the 4 pi epsilon naught, even the r naught, and this factor can all come out of the equation. You can all take it out. So if I do that, you know, my equation of my line then simply becomes negative e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. Now I'm going to go ahead and take out the r naught as well. And I'm going to multiply it by the factor. And essentially, 
what stays from here is just your, you know, your one over one. From this one, it's your one half, and then your one third and what have you. And because I also took out the negative, I want to make sure that I take out the negative from all the other ones too. So this product then gets multiplied by you know, one minus one over two plus one third minus one fourth plus, and it goes on forever. Now it so happens that this is actually a series that we have an answer or an answer to. And this product that's being multiplied by your fundamental base of your equation ju is just simply, oh sorry, I forgot the times two. I forget that. It's very important, you know, because you're summing from both sides. This essentially right here, it's simply arise because of your geometry that you're analyzing your system. And this value happens to be greater than 1, which is a good thing. And the value of this is actually 1.386. So the fact that the whole uh, equation is still negative, because we're talking about you know, columbic interaction between a negative uh, charge species and a positive charge species, and we're multiplying it by a value that is greater than 1, this means that if this is 1 right here, then our energy level diagram should lie somewhere below it, like right here. So this is 3. And that's your, your ion line. Now, in real life, we know that crystals don't exist in lines, really, or they're not just an ion pair. It's literally something that is three-dimensional and has an ordered structure. Sometimes um, it could be different geometries, but normally it's a cubic structure. So because that forms in nature, then that tells me that the energy of a three-dimensional crystal, which is the fourth one that we need to put on the energy level diagram, the value should be greater than, than 1.386. And this value of 1.386 is actually Madelung's constant, which you should, which you should know, um, which is something that's uh, required preliminary to the problem. Um, so I know that below um, this value of 1.386, I have my three-dimensional crystal. Now, an energy level diagram is pretty much kind of quantized by different steps. Now, what is, what is, what is quant, uh, or quantizing our problem here? Well, this is zero because if our energy is zero, so we can almost assume that we're multiplying, or that the modeling is constant for an, a pair, an ion pair at infinite separation is, is zero. And this is one, so we can assume that the modeling constant is one, or we know that it's one for an ion pair. So if I start writing this out on the side right here, give me some space. I know that's one. I'm going to go ahead and label this by Madeline's constant, which is 1.386. So if I come over here, relabel this. This value here is 1.386. And this value here has to be greater than 1.386 for a three-dimensional crystal. And this little diagram here is the answer to your question from the, from the exam. So when you take the exam, you don't really have to go through all this math to answer the problem. If you know the material uh, from lecture, then the solution should be very straightforward very easily. And also, if you keep in mind that there's a lot of material that you need to know before you take the exam, and knowing how to absorb that material and apply it will help you in, in, in solving these type of problems, which, is, which, are, which can be pretty difficult.